Happy Friday, Pat. Hey, Rick. How you doing? Well, I feel like a stranger to, on this show. Welcome to September. Do you remember August at all? Uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, you know, I know I keep saying that time just rips by, Man. but it's been uh, it's Terrible. been brutal. So it's been, it's been unbelievable. I mean, yeah. how it just it just uh, just flew by. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're gonna rip through the numbers here uh, today. We're gonna talk about today's numbers, today's rates, and uh, a little bit of opinion, and talk about a couple of big mortgage companies that uh, decided to say ta ta and why they're why they're doing that. And I want to. Uh, let people know that you can see on the bottom here um, in the comment section pinned to the top, there's a link there and you can click on that and you can actually join us on this call and you can decide whether you want it to be audio or audio and video. It'll tee you up on the bottom and then we will add you to the show. So it's just something out there we thought we'd experiment with and see if you enjoy that. Then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, if it doesn't work, we'll never do it again. Um, but yeah, just something to make uh, our show. You never know what's gonna, how it's going to go. Got to make it different. We're exploring new horizons. That's right. That's right. Here's my chart you're all tired of seeing, but you can tell here that, you know, sales are still flat. They're still hanging around 2,800 on a seven-day moving average. We have 19,000 listings today, up from 18.8 yesterday. But look at this little blip right here, Pat. See that? These are new listings that are coming on over a seven-day average. And we went up about 250. And while that's not really significant, what is what is significant is that number went up because of homes that went back on the market. So you've got new listings and then back on the market. And it's back on the market. It's been running about 725. All of a sudden, it came out like 865. And you know, it's, it's anybody's guess why people put their homes back on the market. I mean, I don't know, you know, maybe they decided they were going to wait till school starts and put the home back on or whatever. But for some reason it blipped up in the numbers today. So I get the go figure. Is it people testing the market and saying, okay, we're going to come back in and, uh, you know, well, it, test it, it might be. I mean, I know we went through a trend there where people were just listing their house for one week and then, um, saying, well, it didn't work. I'm out. And uh, maybe they decided to to mm -hmm. get back in. Um, 72 sold a great choice of a name for all markets. <laughs> uh, still seeing three-day people canceling and putting back on. That could be it. That could be why. So they, they for some, I don't know what they gain out of that, but we'll have to do a, well, I got to get well, a hold of somebody from those guys and see why that. I wonder if it's kind of like a when a, when you're in the stock market, you bought a stock at uh, ten, you want to sell it at twenty. You put a limit order. Maybe they put a limit order in at yeah, twenty. There you go. You know. <laughs> um. So you got a couple more comments coming in here. Yeah, Daniel, what's the point? I don't know. I don't know. Here's where our actual numbers are today. I'm gonna pull out the handy dandy magnifying glass so that you don't have to strain here, but it's it's showing the price range and the average change per month since the month of May and hmm. total change percent since May. And it's showing here that in the price range of up to 300,000 prices have gone down 0 0.2, then three to 500, they've gone down a half a percent, 500, 800, they've gone down 1.2. The biggest drop is in the 1 million to 1.5 million. They've gone down 3.2. 2% in a relatively short period of time. I didn't want to hit bomb bomb there. <laughs> um, so prices are definitely, these are median home prices. So, so they're definitely coming down and there's a uh, um, good reason for that. I wanted to touch on this briefly too, because I, I always see, I saw a Facebook ad yesterday by a, a major player on the market. The Facebook ad says, click here to get the latest foreclosures. And People were furious because there weren't any. <laughs> they clicked on this link. There were no foreclosures. And you can see here that these are pre-foreclosures, foreclosures pending, and we're at 840. And we were at 506 at the beginning of the year and, and well below 2020 levels. So if you're shopping for foreclosures, 
we're not seeing them. And the other thing that I noticed today, this caught my attention. Your second chance is now. Did you miss out on purchasing a home while anxiously waiting for prices to go up month over month? Pulte <laughs> Homes has reduced their base price. I have not seen new builds doing this. I've seen them mm. add more incentives, you know, 10,000, 20,000 towards a design center. The base price is usually the last thing they want you to touch. Yeah. Uh, is this Pulte Homes or Lennar? Just a minute. Yeah, you better Let's give see. it, get it right. Lennar. Lennar. So now Lennar was the ones that all year were not paying realtor commissions. So now they are. But look at this. This base price went from 414 to 3899. So they're going down. Pretty was it 509 to 474? 509, 509 to 474, correct. That's yeah, 40,000 uh, on that one. 551 like, uh, 40, to 511. So they're going down about 40K. Yeah, they're just like, they probably said, let's slash every house 40 grand. Yeah, yeah. So, Pat, lending. Saw this headline. Did suburban mortgage shut down? Yeah, they're they're a local. Uh, they're they're based Arizona, California, Missouri. They had about I don't know how many offices, probably about forty or fifty LOs. But they were a pretty good little shop, you know, in the Arizona area. I know a buddy of mine that's uh, passed away used to work for them. I mean, they're just a you know good solid little shop. And I don't know why they obviously decided to give up. But um, there was another there was another wholesaler on there, and Amerisave, that was a. a was transformed from another company that uh, basically said they're going to exit wholesaling here. They're just, all they did was wholesaling. And uh, this last week, two weeks, uh, it's been uh, a constant steady flow of uh, companies that are, you know, Lone Depot got out of wholesaling. So it's been a constant flow of uh, mortgage, mortgage companies, L, uh, companies laying off, shutting their doors. This is, this is really not, I mean, nothing, um, anybody that's been in the business 10 or 15, 20 years. Um, uh, yeah, they've been around about 30 years, Jackie, you're correct, since 1988, I believe. But, um, you know, if you've been in business a number of years, this is, you kind of saw this coming last year when the everybody was just the refi boom and everything was going crazy. You figured there was just going to be a time. You just didn't know when. And when well, rates started going wonder. up. I want you to know. remind everybody the accuracy of your predictions. And I love this one because you said when the Christmas parties are held at like stake 44, <laughs> then you know, the end is near. And uh, that was pretty damn you, close. Uh -huh. Yeah, you were, you were pretty close. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, Cause when, cause uh, when times are bad, the Christmas parties are a Albertson's cheese platter in the break room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it for the last 30 years. I just had, to, you're right. I forgot about that. I mean, that's, and that was December, you know, kind of November, December. And I said, you know, watch this Christmas party theory. It's going to hold true now. You watch the Christmas parties this year are going to be back in the break rooms. Yeah, that's right. They're <laughs> going to get a $25 Amazon gift card bring, and a cheese white elephant. Yeah, bring it. Yeah, we're, everybody bring a gift, white elephant, nothing over $10. And um, <laughs> you can, uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's so true but i've been yeah but i've been touting that so i guess kudos to uh the wisconsin boy hey but, the uh, jobs um you know new jobs more new jobs i guess more new jobs means more bad news for rates yeah yeah i can't figure this out but i think behind the news you know you got the obviously it was a uh, good jobs number but i if you look behind those numbers i think uh a large for they said a large percent of those numbers <laughs> were jobs at the 16 and 19 and 20 year olds were uh scooping up oh great uh there was a good large percentage of you know the 300 you know 16 to 20 so i think there was some you know the numbers were good but um you know, and typically, I mean, you saw right now the bond market today was up 41 basis points. I mean, this is the four and a half coupon. This the 10 year treasury was down seven basis points. So, I mean, on a good, I mean, quite frankly, on a good jobs market report, um, once again, the market reads behind it. If it would have had a good jobs market report, you would have seen the bond actually, quite frankly, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the market should have gotten worse. You know, interest rates should have gone up, but they actually settled back down. And you see, remember I told you about the channel? 
yeah. the other day. Um, here's that channel that, you know, that, that channel, uh, that we're, you know, we're kind of sitting in that channel and well, I'm kind of maybe fudging a little bit there, but you see today it broke out of this channel on the downside, which is, uh, we had obviously since, uh, what day is so, that? So, it, so that everybody understands when the, the green line going up means that there's pressure for rates to come down. Yes, correct. This is the prices. Yeah. I, about, you yes. know, me, I always look at prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. You know, um, but, you know, there's obviously evidence that uh, there's indications that, you know, in terms of the next 30 days, you know, we've had a rough, uh, obviously, since this has been August 2nd. I mean, they were kind of plateauing there. We've seen this channel. But now um, there's some indications that, you know, if you're looking to, you know, do something in the next 30, 60 days, rates are probably going to improve here. I, I believe. I mean, I'm not, you know, obviously I don't have a crystal ball, but based on we've gotten beaten up here. You know, uh, let me just get rid of this here. Uh, come on. Well, Pat, I'm going to um, jump in real quick because we have a question here from Mark. Welcome to the show, Mark. The biggest drop is in the $1 million to $1.5 million. Please drop down. Okay, I, can. Oh, I, got him. I think I can't hear you, Mark. <laughs> well, that didn't work. <laughs> what? I hear somebody. That was... Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a good time. We'll try again, oh. Mark, in a couple of minutes, but go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, okay. Another experiment going wrong, but hey, we'll keep pushing forward. We're always trying to push toward new uh, horizons, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, the, <laughs> how about a guess the bomb date? Can I, winner gets the fries cheese plate. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, bottom line is last 30 days, you know, really uh, has been, tough on rates, but I believe that, uh, you know, looking out the next 30, 60 days, if you're closing the next 30, 60 days, I mean, I think rates are going to improve. I mean, I, I mean, they'll improve. I mean, we got the feds meeting September 20th, 21st, you know, we, this right here is kind of like a beat up session before the feds, I, you know, we're probably going to see rates, I believe, you know, get better. So, I mean, I've been holding, you know, some people that are looking to lock the next 30, 60 days. I think they are going to get better, um, in due time. But, you know, interest, I want to kind of, this is kind of me pulling back and being Pat for a second here. Um, I just, this is kind of interesting. You know, remember I told you about how we break it down. Everybody's watching the day-to-day -day market, but um, this is the interest rates going back. And uh, you can cut me off when you start, you know, I start really getting divergent. Well, I'm going to, hey, hey, hold on just a second. Mark says he thinks he can hear us now. So we're going to bring okay. him back. Mark, are you there? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Outstanding! Yep. Welcome to the show. Oh, okay, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for the. I like this new style, and um, I enjoy your comments very much. Um, I just uh, logged in, and I was listening to you a little while ago when you were talking about the uh, inventory. This little spike you saw. You, I know that you have been talking about being flat for several weeks, and there was a little jump up. The last time you gave your week, you gave your weekly um, address. I. I checked the Gilbert, um, this is, that's the area that I'm constantly watching. I checked the Gilbert inventory using Redfine and I saw it jump up 90 uh, properties. Um, but over the last two days, it dropped down to, uh, it dropped down to maybe a 65 or 70. It just, they just disappeared over two days. And um, uh, that, that sort of caught me by surprise, and I, I was wondering why something like that. Yeah, that, well, yeah. There, there, could, there could be a couple of reasons for that, Mark, and uh, one of them could simply be that uh, um, it it jumped up and people decided, oh, shoot, let's take it off over Labor Day weekend because we're not going to be in town. And, and some of uh, it is, quite honestly, that company that we were just poking fun at that says, we're going to cancel these listings and then we're going to put them back on. There's some nonsense going out out there in the market. But as a rule, the number of new listings are every week are actually fewer and fewer that are coming on the market. But because sales are so slow, the actual active listings on the market continues to grow. And so right. I think we're going to see that. And as in this, and Pat's going to show us here in just a moment, the correlation between, mortgage-backed securities and interest rates, because there's also people out there saying, well, just wait. As soon as they start dumping all these uh, MBSs, we're going to see uh, homes, you know, rates shoot through the roof. And we're, we're kind of trying to analyze that and see what's 
really going on. But thanks for your question, Mark. I hope I answered it okay. Uh, you did a great job. Thank you very much. Love your show. You bet. Thanks. Have a great time. <laughs> so, oh, it, cool. It worked. It so, worked. We're 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 going to New Horizons. I'm trying to get out of this thing. Let me see here if I can. I apologize. Let me see if I can. Um, so yeah. So what we were talking about earlier today, Pat, was you know you know um, you were sharing with me the numbers of how much the central bank was purchasing mortgage-backed securities, and then how how that's affected actual mortgage lending rates. And you were sharing numbers somewhere around the tune of they were buying $115 billion worth in February or in last year in December. And now they're down to like a few million. And yeah. so it's going to be mean, interesting just, to watch to see what, let what me it pull does. this up here. Let me okay. um, just uh, give me one second here. My God, I'm just going the wrong way here. This is, I wish <laughs> I was as depth in a computer as you are. Well, I may be able to put the charts up there, but I sure as hell can't tell you what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to, you know, I just actually, uh, uh, once again, remember I, the last several months I've been trying to break down my, from a mental standpoint, so watch it, the market day to day, week to week, month to month. You know, here's, we've gone through these segments here. <laughs> you know, we're, once again, this is uh, August to, 17 to two, November, you know, rates were uh, going up, right? Then we got November to right about here, you know, right in this area. So we're seeing segments. We're seeing this seg This market just seems very segmented in terms of activity, you know. Um, this has been really, rates started going up right at the beginning of the year. So I think this whole year we're going to see this choppiness. You know, it's just that um, I just think that the uh, next couple of months it's going to still be choppy. But I think beginning of the year, you're going to see some nice things on, on the rates. Here Now, here's going to that chart thing, uh, the, the MBS, the chart thing, the MBS. Yeah, because I'm going to want you to explain why you think we'll see uh, better rates at the end of the year. Well, I think obviously – I just pulled this up. I wanted to kind of show people because people say, oh, you know, they're going to stop the MBS. It's going to, you know, rates have gone up. But look at back. If I could blow this up, you know, maybe I can't. I don't know. This up. Let me bear with me here. I'm not as that's, adept. Probably not, that's probably not going to blow up. Just go okay. ahead. All right. Let me just going to say here, here he got this. is. I went back, back and tracked the MBS purchases, right? Uh, going back to 2014, and I'm going to kind of zoom along here. This, this, just so people could see here. This is 22 billion right in here. 22, 21, 42 billion. And then uh, in 2018, the end of 2018, 300 million right in here. So they really stopped buying them. But then, uh, middle of 2019, three billion, two billion, five billion, six billion, and then. The pandemic hit, and there's question marks here because basically the M the feds basically said we're gonna just purchase as many as we have to to help the market. So this is the pandemic, right in the start of the pandemic. They had no numbers uh to come out <coughs> with how many MBS purchases they were making. So they went February, March, two billion. By June, they jumped it to 96 billion. So then it ran from 96 billion, 109 billion, all through the end of 2020. You also got to remember this volume, 96 billion, 109, 110, 111 billion, uh, up through you know February, March of 2021, April, it was 131 billion. This was the refinance boom. This is the supply. Yeah, but take a take a look at that. Just go back to before the pandemic, you know, 1.1 billion, 1.4. And now yeah. you're looking at numbers of 128 billion. Yeah. That, yeah. That's that is a hell of a lot of uh, injection into the system to pull rates down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as <laughs> far as it's phenomenal. And then I'm just showing, you know, what people can make their own. And I'm not trying to sit here and say, this is the answer, but I'm just trying to give people a sense of, you know, where we've been and where we're looking at now, 126 billion, you know, 103 billion. And then uh, the end of this year, when rates uh, started climbing, they went from 106 billion to 96 billion to 84 billion. 
By January, they're at 70 billion. And then this year, they've been running, running 52, 38 billion, 40 billion, 34 billion. Then June of this year, um, basically, which kind of coincides with, uh, you know, well, actually, rates came down. Um, but you had in June, July, and August, you had them tapering from 40 billion down to 13 billion, 12 billion. And as as of August, we're down to seven point eight billion dollars in MBS purchases. So it's been they're slowly going behind the scenes. They're tapering their purchases, and once again, the refis are down 85, 90 percent. So I talked to Dan Habib, who runs you know his dad runs MBS Highway. I sent him a note, and he said he's you know I'm correct in in terms of the refinances have been down. So have the MBS purchases. So People can make their own conclusion, but I think that it's not as, you know, they're doing that behind the scenes. And well, I that's think interesting it, stuff to look at because it, 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 again, I think it kind of flies in the face of where people are saying that uh, um, the central bank is going to um, just stop, just stop. And yeah. they're, you said they're going to be kind of piddling around with this for about five years. So they're not just going to pull the rug up underneath this. But what I find interesting is now you're starting to see, so, Daniel asked a question. Are you still seeing cash buyers out there? Yes. Not as many. Um, but um, now you're starting to see a little bit of chatter coming out now where Congress is not liking that Chairman Powell said that he's going to cause some pain. They're not liking that he says he may cause a recession. You know, they want to just keep spending. Mm -hmm. Keep spending, spending, spending. And he's trying to reel this in. Then you've got two opposing factors. And what that means to me, and I'm not getting political, I'm just talking exactly where we're sitting right now, that mm -hmm. this is going to be out there for a while because yeah. I don't see Powell backing off and I don't see Congress putting a lid on spending. So you've got, it's kind of like, you know, a married couple, you know, <laughs> I'm, my wife is very frugal with the budget and I buy a car every other week you know yep. so so it's it's going to be interesting and i'm um so i may not be as optimistic on rates as as some people are going into the first of the year including barry habib he thinks that by the first quarter of of next year we could see uh the pressure of rates kind of subside and he's he's the one that's won three crystal ball awards not me i just mm -hmm. i'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it What's I think, say you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think, uh, you, you know, we are going to see pressure, but I think, you know, I'm short term, I think in the next 30 to 45 days, I think you're going to see them um, get a little bit better. Uh, there's still going to be pressure on the upside. But um, after that, after the, you know, because like I said, I think once the Fed does release their numbers or meeting numbers, it's kind of like after the fact rates do kind of calm down. But I think based on the activity, you know, we're seeing choppiness. We're going to see choppiness through the you know spring, summer of next year, but you know if this, the pain that they say they want to inflict, inflict, inflict or inflict, um, you know that's probably going to come around. What do you think? In probably about the middle of next year. Yeah, I think middle. so. It's not going to happen quick because you've no. got to get you got to pull the money out of the system first. You've got to, you know, we've had a lot of liquidity. Banks have had a lot of cash, and so they're trying to suck that out, mm -hmm. and so that's going to take take some time and there's always you know, a lag people, effect yeah people ask uh, you know i see the comments you know realtors just want to sell you a house they're always going to tell you it's a good time to buy and i thought i wanted to touch on that for just a moment today because i think and this is just my opinion and my opinion only and that is that if you're in a position where you have to buy now and by that have to buy nobody really has to buy but if your lease is coming up and you got two kids and you're in a two bedroom apartment and it's crowded and you can afford to go purchase a house and you find a smoking deal on a home because they're out there, then mm -hmm. it's, it's a good, good time to buy. But if you're wondering, is it good to wait? Is it good to sit back and watch before I make a home purchase? Because I'm not really sure Then my advice is absolutely. Then it's mm -hmm. not a good time to buy. Because yeah. it's one thing's very clear. Prices are coming down. You just saw it with the builders. I yep. don't know how much farther down they're coming, but there is no upward pressure on pricing. It's all in the other direction. 
Well, we're back. We had some technical difficulties. I sounded like Alan and the chipmunks there, and I guess I was making dogs ears hurt. Um, so we thought we'd um, just continue where we left off and then re-upload the show. And it turns out that when I reached for a drink of water, I hit the USB cable on the back of my mic and it tweaked the little pin. So I guess I sounded like... <laughs> yeah, don't move. Don't do anything to the microphone. My hands are going to stay right here. Yeah. The rest of the show is right there. So I was talking about whether or not it's a good time to buy. What do you think? You know, I think uh, you're right. I think, uh, is it a blanket? It's not a blanket statement. You know, you get these people, like, oh, it's a great time to buy, great time to buy. I, Case by case, you know, individual by individual, I think for the right person, because you're having pull, people pull out, there are 16% of the contracts in July pulled out, correct? I mean, they pulled out of their, uh, they, I read I read that. So people are yeah, reevaluating Nationally, yeah. Yeah, nationally. You know, so you're going to always have those people that you said are going through a divorce. Uh, they've got to sell because somebody died. You might be able to get a half a million dollar property that's discounted by 10 or 15%. You know, they're being realistic. Um I think it's just not a blanket statement. It's a great time to buy. Yeah, I think um, there's, I think realtors have to be careful um, because it's not a great time to buy for everybody. And I Correct. think it just, uh, when I hear things like that, I think they just left a raw, raw meeting from a title company. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think what, what I'd like our viewers to really understand is that, you know, you have a responsibility to keep up with the data and the trends so that nobody sways you in your decision. And that as long as you don't view the house as a stock market, that helps. If you view the house as a roof over your head and you see one that fits your budget where you can fix your payment for 30 years. And if you did come in with a rate that was high, um, you're not going to be able to refinance next year. You just, I just don't think you will. Mm -hmm. um, but, if recessions end up being, um, you know, a little prolonged and a little steeper than what they want, that rates always come down during a recession. They don't, they come down a hundred percent of the time, but it's coming down from where is, mm -hmm. they, are we going to be coming down from 9% to six? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, so you might buy now at six and over the course of this mess, we get in uh, and I'm just making this stuff up. I don't know for sure. Um, and you get into late next year and then we're at 9%. And then along comes a recession. They roll you back to six. You're not ahead, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Cause you're still in a budget. You can afford the house that you wanted. And the equity has probably eroded no doubt. But if you're planning on staying there for a long time, you you know, there's, there's nothing to fret. And the other comments that I see Pat is, People are going to start dumping their houses as soon as they end up upside down. That makes no economic sense. No, no. Like you said, if, if the data, you know, they there's trillions of dollars of equity out there. Number one, what was I can't remember the number. I don't have it from you. It's like five or six tr trillion plus. I mean, of equity. Yeah. Once again, 35 million people are 4% or lower in their interest rate, which never happened back in the crash. So there's so many factors that say that people are not going to be just dumping <laughs> homes left and right. Um, but once again, there's that there was that buyer demand out there that's been built up the last year that people were going out these homes and they're seeing 30, 40 people trying to bid on a home. They're still out there. There, There's a lot of people. Yeah, those buyers are still out there. This is the first cycle yeah. where I've seen, Pat, like, and I agree with you that there's all these people waiting. Yeah. Back in 2008, there was nobody waiting to buy a house. No, no. They're all waiting to dump. They were just dumping, dumping. Now, so some people are getting kind of obnoxious about it and kind of, I think, not very kind in saying, you know, ah, I hope people go broke. I hope it crashes. You know, like lighten up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm all for an orderly adjustment and affordability showing back up. But I just think when statements are made like that, you know, just, That's just uh, being jealous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I think yeah. once again, I mean, it's the stock went from ten. Homes have basically doubled. They went from ten to twenty. Okay, you think the stocks would go to thirty, thirty-five? Right now, it went from twenty down to maybe eighteen or seventeen. 
this time frame, I think, is affording the people that really wanted to buy to sit back. Once again, we, I'll repeat myself, but sit back, reevaluate it, maybe put a little bit more, try to save up a little bit more money, tighten up your credit a little bit better. Uh, I think it just it is a good time for a certain handful of certain buyers. Um, not, but not for everybody. Like you said, I think things are going to soften up a little bit more. You know, the, the people are saying that we're going to see a crash. I'm sorry. I am going to, I am going to put my foot down and say, we're not seeing a crash. I am. This is that, that's just stupid talk. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, you know, unless you have yeah. some kind of weird black swan event and there are, and we'll get the comments. Well, you don't understand. Yeah. You're not looking at a big picture. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You know, yeah, do yeah, whatever you want. Um, yeah. But I think if, this is a good time to save your money, get your credit score as high as you can so that you can get the best rate you can and just keep watching the market and you will know. And I also caution you too, if, if the market gets bad, um, everybody's going to sit out and that's your best opportunity. Yep. So when it gets bad, the news is bad. And all your neighbors are going to be saying, I wouldn't touch real estate with a 10 foot pole. And you're sitting at this house going, but I don't know. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and so the ones that are waiting for a 20% crash, I guarantee you, if it goes down 20%, they're not going to buy. They're going no. to wait because yep. it's just going to be too, too nerve wracking. So you have to know in your head what you're trying to accomplish and uh, where you want to come in at. And, and you'll know when you get to that, to that moment. Well, but I, I really caution people against, playing that much into it and trying to chase the chart yeah i mean if you find a house that's got good bones um i had a gentleman that called me i did a loan for about three about two years no about a year ago he bought in maricopa he called me up about uh two weeks ago he goes hey i've got this house that's open door there was listed for 575 they bought it for 536 in May. They listed it for 575 in June. He called me up a couple of weeks ago. He goes, Pat, there's this house that's listed by open door. He goes, I guarantee they're going to drop the price down to about 510, 515 here. Sure enough as heck, just the other day, they dropped it to 505. Yeah. And he said, he goes, you know what? That house is still going to sit. At, and he knows Maricopa pretty well. He goes, that's that house is still going to sit empty. It's got a pigeon infestation. He goes, if it gets down to about the 470, 475 mark, I'd be okay with that. You know, he was kind of just a range to say, because he said it might go down to 450, but I'm okay with 470, 475. I'm not going to pay 505. But this guy was just kind of, you know, he just, and the house has been on the market for 71 days. Well, I'll tell you what, another thing to look for too, when talking about that same company is when you go through and look at their holdings, I was amazed at how many townhomes they purchased. Really? Just scroll down condos, townhomes, condos, townhomes. I mean, they went on an unprecedented buying spree, buying anything and everything. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. I don't know what they saw when they were reading the tea leaves. But the outlying areas like Maricopa, Santan, and Buckeye are the ones where they're really being forced to do a deep discount because now they're competing with, with the builders. And the builders mm -hmm. are competing by trying to offer some really creative financing and long-term locks. Yep. And, uh, yep. and then, you know, take this $20,000 check to the design center. So there's just more competition in those, in those areas. So I think it's going to be, um, going in between now and Christmas. Um, it, I think there's just going to be more and more anxiety in the real estate market and anxiety can produce some pockets of opportunity. And so while I say, if if you got if you want to wait and you got to sit it out, that's not a bad decision. Keep keep your eyes open because you never know. Yeah, and, I mean that's uh, the thing. This is it just gives you an opportunity. Just keep your eye. You hit the nail on the head. Keep your eyes open. There might be that one house that you've always wanted that's all of a sudden popped up. As I said on the show with Ruby and uh, Jackie the other day, uh, coming to realization, you know, we're going to see this choppiness until rates. We see some type of form of stabilization in rates. Yeah, because it affects buyers and sellers, as I said the other day. So rates going up affects sellers just as much because when they're at six percent, the sellers got to potentially turn around and buy something. They're not they're going to like, you know, I'm just going to sit tight. Well, so, those numbers I track on the seven day moving average, you're not going to count anymore because we've got Labor Day weekend. So I'm going to keep track of them, but they're not going to mean anything until two weeks from today. because yep. it, It's going to have to wash out, but they'll be down. And I'm really curious 
how low we will go on the contract side when I look at those numbers uh, long around next Wednesday. Uh, that's yep. that's going to be a curious one to do. And I did do a video on water that many of you have seen, and it raised a lot of questions, uh, especially with me. And I have lined up a water expert in Arizona, and this guy is top of the line when it comes to knowing our water issues. And I'm going to be interviewing him this week, and I'll be posting that show probably later in the week, if not maybe Sunday night of, of next week. And I, I encourage you to really be on the lookout for that one and subscribe and hit the That's bell notification one. because that this guy, he blew me away. I talked to him for almost a half hour on the phone this day, and I, I couldn't believe what he was telling me. And, really? uh, you yeah. have that feeling every time you talk to me, right? Yes. Yes. And then I, then I go have a drink. And so, <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize to everybody for the sudden cutoff. If you're watching us live, but we're going to save this and re-upload it. And, uh, we'll have all the bugs worked out. It was just a stupid little cable and, yeah. uh, we have fixed it. So you live by the right. tech, you, you die, die by, by tech. the tech. Have a good Alrighty. one. Pat. Have a good one. Stay here. Bye-bye.